We're uh, we're ready to roll then. Uh, so thanks again for for having me on and uh, and giving me some of your time out of your busy days today. Uh, like Caitlin mentioned there, we'll shoot for 40, 45 minutes and then we'll have questions. If you have anything uh, that kind of comes to mind, feel free to just type it in that question box and we'll get to it towards the end. Uh, my name is Adriel Michaud. Uh, right now I'm the VP of Marketing at Active Demand. Uh, I've been using market automation since about 2006, which is for the technology a, a pretty long period of time. Uh, it hasn't really been around that long, but um, I've been using it for, for a while. I came into this uh, through programming, and through programming, I got into the automation, uh, the uh, the digital marketing side of things. And uh, and what I really love is the, is the science side of digital marketing because there's so much that's measurable and so much that you can uh, pull out of it. Uh, you can really turn it into uh, a science instead of just like a, a dark art. <laughs> so that's a part uh, I really love. I've got about uh, nine years agency exper uh, side experience, and then the rest is all client side. Um, uh, just a little bit more about the company I'm representing. It's uh, called Active Demand. Uh, it's a marketing automation platform, and we've made it for uh, marketing agencies out there, B2B companies, SaaS companies, and uh, increasingly we've been working a lot with uh, senior care marketing teams. Uh, for today, I might I might just interchangeably say clients or customers. So if you're a B2B, imagine uh, customers. If you're a marketing agency, imagine uh, your clients. Um, and really, today the one, the one thing I wanted to talk about, and it's it's something that I've been talking about since about 2008, is this idea of attribution uh, driving strategy. Um, so we, we talked today and, and the, the topic was uh, finding out what digital ads are working and proving that it's working. And I really think that piece is key and it, it has been key for, the, for so long. Uh, some companies are doing a really great job of it, um, but, but some of them aren't. So uh, let me talk a little bit about how, that, uh, how this all plays into strategy. So the old way of how you would uh, you would do campaign strategy. Imagine like if any of you have seen Mad Men, like Don Draper. You know, you do a pile of of research. You talk to some customers. You go talk to some uh, prospective customers. Uh, maybe you come up with some insight over uh, over a whole bunch of whiskey, like Don Draper. Or maybe <laughs> maybe you don't need that uh, that encouragement. Um, but the old the old way of thinking, uh, you know, would give you this on demand burst of leads. You would do the campaign. The campaign would have a definite start and end date. Uh, you would have things uh, typically uh, in a blocking chart. Week one, we're going to put this message in market. Week two, we're going to put this message. We're going to use these channels uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, using this style of campaign strategy would put uh, a lot of money on the research and planning and a lot less on the, on the execution and the optimization of channels because you were consistently changing up messaging in market. Uh, there was uh, uh, not so much opportunity for optimization of those channels and learnings from uh, from using those channels. And I think, you know, this style of, of campaign strategy is still being used today. And I think it's still uh, a really great way of doing a, a brand awareness campaign. Uh, but if you're looking for like direct response or leads or you're going to use uh, digital primarily for your channels, I think there's a there's a better way. And I, I see other agencies uh, and other really good in-house marketing teams starting to use this new style uh, campaign strategy. Uh, so the, the first part of, a, of getting like a really, really nailing this new style of strategy is to confirm the client goal. So if you're an agency, this means getting the goal in the proposal. <laughs> what, what does the client expect you to do? If you're in-house, this might mean uh, uh, like an annual marketing plan that has a stated goal. And the reason why this is so critical is if your agency side, you've definitely experienced this. If you're in-house and, and your boss is great, maybe you've never experienced this, but clients and bosses change their mind. They change their mind about what they want to see from marketing. And the problem with that is that it's not so good for job stability and it's not good, so good for developing a, a marketing strategy that's really going to work. So definitely start out with like a really solid confirmed client goal. And the next piece that you want on top of that is some measurements that can be proven that actually go towards that goal. Uh, and this is where we start tracking marketing attribution. And attribution just means we know where uh, where our sales are coming from, where our leads are coming from. If you're a nonprofit, where our donations are coming from. So you need to know 
uh, this attribution bit. Now, once you have these two set up, the rest of it starts to become, it's not obvious because of course you still need great strategists and great research behind it. Uh, but creating a digital ad campaign when you have a solid goal in place and you have solid measurements you want to influence becomes a lot easier. It becomes a lot easier because you know what the goal is, you know what you're supposed to be doing and you're not just wishy-washy adding a, a whole bunch of things in. Uh, one of the things that uh, that I've discovered uh, um, through my years in the industry is just a lot of people uh, fancy themselves to be digital strategists, but really the piece that they're interested in is using lots of different channels in creative ways. I think when you were talking about digital strategy and a really great campaign that matches uh, goals, a great strategist will use the ta the techniques and the channels that will get the results that they need. So I think that that's the bit that's uh, uh, missing from a lot of people today and the piece that we really need is that attribution. So the last bit, and this is, this is the, the part where we really go off script from the old campaign strategy, was this uh, measure, optimize, add channels, enhance creative, this really ongoing process that we use. So there's no end date to this thing. We, if, we start a if we start a marketing campaign and it's working, we keep going. <laughs> we don't. We don't just turn it off uh, just because we hit the end date on the campaign or the the budget was expired, right? We keep generating leads for the company. We keep bringing donations in if we're a nonprofit. We keep recruiting new people if we're working for working for a recruiting firm, right? We keep hitting the goal and we keep moving forward. Now, this ongoing process. If you're in house, it gets you better results and you'll hit the goals that you you had set out for you in your quota or the ones that uh, perhaps you set out if you manage a team. If your agency side, your clients are going to be happier and stay longer. Uh, and the interesting thing about this is that you're uh, generally putting more money on channel management. So you're spending more money and more time on Google ads and Facebook ads instead of, uh, you know, most of the time on the strategy and the timing and that kind of thing. Now, the piece that we really need to nail that I that I see in most campaigns failing with is that first little bit, not getting the client goal, not getting definitive measurements to that goal. Um, and then kind of, it's not winging it afterwards, but boy, like give it, give it a couple of months and it sure feels like winging it. When you start second guessing it and you start looking back at that campaign, you start looking, man, why do we choose this thing again? Oh, we thought this would be a good idea. Why do we think this was a good idea? It doesn't have any backup, right? So we need that attribution. We need that piece that uh, that tells us, you know, what's working. So um, maybe just so I can just introduce the concept of, of attribution. Attribution is being able to prove that your digital ads and your marketing works. Uh, you should be able to know your marketing's influence on prospect behavior. Really, what we're trying to do is take, you know, all these people who don't know about the company and get them to know the company or the organization, and then those people who know about us work them down the sales funnel uh, to the point where they can contact sales or uh, do whatever we're trying to do for, for marketing's goals, right? Uh, and the interesting thing about this is if we know the influence and we know it really, really well, we can predict future behavior. We can predict uh, how uh, our audience is going to react to a particular piece of content or a particular channel. Or, you know, if our boss says, hey, you know, uh, what happens if we double your marketing budget next year? We can actually answer that question. And if the boss says, hey, uh, we want to have your marketing budget next year, we should be able to come back to them and say, hey, okay, you want to have the, the marketing budget. This is going to be the impact if you do that. We are going to lose this many leads. We're going to lose this much business. And when you're able to speak at this level, you get a seat at the table, uh, at, that, at the management table that is really worthy of, of marketing's impact on the business. And the thing that I really like about having really great attribution is that you make strategy that doesn't suck. Because <laughs> too much strategy out there is based on hopes and dreams and, and not enough of it is based on uh, what we know is working. Like there's still some, some experimental stuff, of course, that we'll always have to do, uh, you know, just to test the market and, and test new channels and that kind of thing. Uh, but without using what we know, we're missing out on a whole bunch of intelligence about um, uh, what channels are, are working out there. 
So uh, one question I wanted to ask uh, all of you, and uh, you know, this is a, I, I was tr struggling with how to word this because there's so many different ways of, uh, of asking this question is, um, do you fully know how, how marketing gets customers in? So if you were to take a look at 100 customers that your, your company got in over the last year, what percentage of them would you know the story of? Would you know how marketing influenced them? So I'm just going to launch a real quick poll here. And we'll just, uh, we'll just wait, uh, say, 30, 45 seconds for everyone to answer that. And I know that sometimes when I ask this question, I actually get zero because uh, <laughs> no one's asked that question before. <laughs> you know, we just haven't been looking at it or we've been assuming or every once in a while sales tells us, you know, this number or they tell us that uh, a customer came in through this or a customer saw our advertising. Oh, that's interesting. Now, the real question is, if they saw the advertising, uh, did it influence them? Did they buy anything because of it, right? <laughs> it's not enough just to see us in a magazine. They actually have to do something based off of it, right? All right. That seems like we've got just about everyone voted there. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And really, most people are, are answering right in that 30, 30 to 50% range. So uh, there's not like a high level of... Uh, uh, of understanding of how marketing is influencing customers. And that's super normal. But really the, the question for a lot of you out there, you know, a, a lot of us don't get enough business to make really strong statistical analysis of our, of our customers. But we hamper ourselves even more when we're only able to make it on a small portion of our customers. So if you're only able to look at your marketing and understand how it's influencing 30% of your customers, you got to ask yourself, is that enough intelligence to make like these make or break decisions on marketing? You know, should you kill a channel if, if it hasn't delivered a, a customer in the last quarter? If you don't make a lot of sales in a year and you're all, only able to really understand 30% of them, maybe that's a not enough to go off of, right? So that's why, uh, that's why I'm talking so much today about understanding attribution and understanding where these customers are coming from because it's so important. Um, number one, it really improves your craft. Uh, I've, I've interviewed, um, oh, I don't know, let's say like 50 or 100 uh, marketing people in, in, my t in my time uh, just in hiring. And one of the interesting things I found is that the years of experience that that person has doesn't really matter. And I know that sounds like uh, uh, heresy <laughs> to some of you out there, but the problem is some people uh, are marketing in areas where they know their results very, very closely. I could think of auto, uh, auto dealer marketers, if they're in the right organization, really understand the res like how they influence their, their customers and how they influence their buyers. And some of those marketers are better for their years of, of experience. So uh, reason number one why enhancing attribution should be important is you will improve faster if you know what works. You will improve faster than everyone else because you know how marketing actually influences a customer and you're not just guessing or going off of a sales trend or something like that. Reason number two, it increases your value. This is a this is a selfish uh, thing to uh, to think about, but as as we're all out there in the market as uh, as human beings that, that have you know value in uh, in delivering work, you will increase your value if you understand how your work influences your customers. Um, and and just beyond this, beyond beyond both of these, uh, job security. <laughs> You know, if uh, if you're at the mercy of a boss or client, you need to be able to show performance that's beyond just a sales trend. If you have like really, really good attribution, you should be able to show marketing's impact even in down times. Uh, you know, here here in uh, Edmonton, Alberta, uh, we, we our, our economy swings wildly based off the price of oil and gas. But there has been times where I've been marketing for, for some of my clients where it's been a downtime and their sales have been level or maybe maybe even a little bit up. They've been gaining in market share. Now, the interesting thing about knowing marketing's impact, if I'm able to show that uh, that impact to them, they're able to see it. And they're able, like, even if their sales are flat, they're able to say, wow, 
that's you know, like the other flat, but we know that the industry is doing X and we can see our marketing is doing Y. So we know marketing is actually doing terrifically for us. Um, the other thing that, uh, that this is gonna help with is if your boss or your client uh, point of contact changes, get a new person in, they are gonna look at everything with a fine tooth comb and they're gonna, they're gonna see whether they're getting impact or not. And they're, they're, they might fire you, <laughs> that, that's a possibility. Now, it's a lot diff more difficult for a new person into an organization to come in and look at something that's clearly working and then decide to turf that, uh, that agency or, or that, uh, that marketing person. So if you can show marketing results that are driving business performance, you're golden. And that's really uh, the crux of, uh, of, of why I'm talking about this. Uh, so enough of why, let's talk about how. <laughs> um, improving attribution, uh, step number one is is purely just focusing on it. Uh, you can focus on it, you can report on it. I think there's a lot of companies out there that, that might even be on this uh, this webinar right now that maybe have fantastic tools, that maybe have fantastic uh, analytics, but just don't share the results or just don't look at the reports or just don't like uh, uh, look on it on a periodic basis. So step number one uh, really with this is is just putting a little bit of focus on it. You don't have to spend like every hour of every day doing attribution, but spending some time on it, making sure that it's included in quarterly reports, monthly reports, however which way you you report out is uh, is going to put some focus on it and is going to put some analysis on it. Um, and the first step that, that I, I recommend to everyone on attribution is just to ask a point of sale. Uh, if you're talking to customers out there uh, and your sales is talking to customers, just ask them, hey, how, how, did, you, uh, how did you hear about us? And uh, you can find some really interesting things there. One of the interesting things, this tracks offline marketing that's kind of notoriously difficult to measure. Uh, it, it does a, a pretty good job of it. You can find some new insights really nicely from this one. Uh, uh, one of the things that I've found when I when I ask clients, sometimes they'll tell me, oh, you know what, today I clicked on a, on a Google ad, but I've seen you guys at a presentation before. Oh, well, that that changes the attribution story, doesn't it? It's, it's because now that PPC click was actually an assist, which is still important, but that uh, that presentation was the uh, the introduction. And really, this is something that you should be doing anyways. Even if your sales team is responsible for this kind of stuff, as a marketer, try to either get on a call, get on a recorded call, or if you can, just call a customer and ask them yourselves. Because this firsthand information and insight uh, from a customer is really interesting to get, and it's practically free. <laughs> you could do this in like five minutes. You can call a customer up and say, how'd you hear about us? I'm just from marketing. I want to know a little bit more about how our customers are using our content, how we're helping our customers. And uh, and it's an interesting thing to uh, to get insight out of. Now, some of the downsides of uh, of this technique, uh, number one, customers forget. You know, uh, they, they might have seen a PPC ad and they claim they, they clicked on an organic listing or, or the free listing, or maybe they uh, uh, were influenced some other way and they just they just forget about this kind of stuff, right? Uh, and number two and number three are kind of connected. You need to train sales and follow up on sales in order to do this. You need to, to get buy-in from sales management. Hey, marketing needs to know what marketing is working so we can deliver more leads for you guys. Uh, so you may need to train your salespeople. And then the third point, this is manual, right? So we need to manually ask customers. We need to insert it. If you guys can, if you have uh, your sales team on a CRM, try to get them to add this to the CRM on a consistent basis so that once a quarter, once a month, whatever, you can go through and analyze results and just kind of compare notes, see what uh, sales is uh, saying and, and see what customers are, uh, are saying about uh, how they found out about the company. Now, the second one that I wanted to talk about and one that I'm sure everyone uh, here has is Google Analytics. Um, I love Google Analytics. I've been using uh, Analytics since uh, it was this company, Urchin, that, uh, that Google bought when it was like a uh, on a server side. Anyways, old old war stories. Uh, nice things about Google Analytics, it's free. It's super easy to use. Like, the, like the, the interface is so powerful and easy to use. It integrates with Google Ads. It integrates with a whole pile of stuff. Um, and really, like as a, as a first blush, Google Analytics is fantastic for getting a lot of these quantitative, uh, quantitative is like numbers-based uh, uh, results on attribution. And really, 
if you're e-commerce, it might be enough. You might get enough information from Google Analytics to make like really smart decisions. And if your conversions are pretty airtight, Google Analytics is fantastic. Now, where it doesn't work all the best is, you know that ease of use uh, uh, point? Sometimes that works in not, not so much in your favor. If you haven't used Google Analytics a lot, or if, uh, God forbid, your boss gets a hold of Google Analytics, they might come out with some faulty insights on uh, on what they think uh, they're pulling out of Google Analytics. They might come up and come up to your desk and say, "Hey, uh, you know, our bounce rate on this uh, unsubscribe page is really bad. I need you to do something about this unsubscribe page that w the bounce rate isn't quite so bad." But then you have to inform them, hey, that's because it's an unsubscribe page and <laughs> the, the uh, users are, are getting exactly what they what they expected out of that page, right? Um, but really, like, the, the issue here is that it's, it's easy to um, get the wrong idea from Google Analytics. There's a lot of metrics in there that might not matter all that much. Uh, and there's a lot of them that do matter, but take a little bit of time to, uh, to kind of configure and set up. And then the other, the other issue, and the, the biggest one really, if, if you're running on lead gen or lead generation basis, is that not all conversions are the same, but Google Analytics reports conversions as conversions, right? These are anonymous, so you can only run quantitative analysis, not qualitative, where we're actually digging into that person. And if you do a good job on, uh, on setting up Google Analytics, your conversions might report on lots of things. Let's say you have email addresses on your on your website. You could configure Google Analytics so that all the clicks on a mail to, which is your, your email addresses, uh, count for something. And you might set those up as a conversion. Or you might set up form fills. But then what happens if the wrong person fills out the form? Or what happens if the, a spammer fills out the form? Or what happens if someone clicks on an email but doesn't actually convert? What happens with all this stuff is that your conversions end up being this huge number, and some people uh, might report that to the client as a lead, and they say, "Hey, you know what? We delivered a hundred leads to you last month." And the sales manager might look at that and say, "What? I, I think I saw five really good leads come through, or ten really good lead, good leads come through last month. What are these guys talking about? A hundred, and that really breaks trust when it's not again." an airtight conversion where, where you're not sure that it's the right kind of conversion. But wait, not only are you uh, over-reporting on, uh, on leads, you're actually under-reporting as well. So you're over-reporting on this kind of stuff, but that's not the only way that customers convert. There's a ton of ways that customers could come into the company and you're only tracking a small portion of them uh, with Google Analytics. Now, again, some companies out there, and you might be listening and say, hey, our, our, our conversion error tight, and they might be. Uh, but there's a lot of different ways that uh, most companies will see customers coming in. Now, you could add some, uh, some information into, say, Google Tag Manager and use it to track a lot of this stuff, but some of the stuff, not so much. Phone calls, uh, only in CRM, like some of these are, are gonna be a little bit more difficult to track. And that's going to contribute to you not having a high percentage of confidence in knowing what marketing is influencing your customers. Uh, so I'm just going to pick a couple out of here uh, to talk about. And when we talk about these, we need to kind of decide between whether we're going to use a, kind of like an all-in-one marketing automation or multiple tools. And just to, to kind of set this up a little bit, uh, you know, really great attribution covers almost all inputs and conversion points. It's, you're not gonna get them all. Like the reason why I didn't have a, a 95 or a 98% uh, option in that poll there is most people just don't get there. It's very difficult to cover that many conversions because uh, there's lots of different ways of, uh, of starting business with someone else. You can start it through a referral, you can start it through a sub account, you can start it through, a, you know, lots of different ways. So. Uh, great attribution is going to cover most of them. Uh, and then when we when you think about it, there's going to be these all-in-one tools versus uh, integrating multiple tools. Some platforms will uh, uh, do more of these functions in the platform, or some of them might just integrate with other others. And I'm going to show the difference between those uh, in just a minute here. Uh, and the third point, regardless which way you go, whether you go all-in-one or integrating multiple tools, you need a central place to track all those prospect touch points. So if Bob from Acme 
uh, follows you on Twitter and opens an email and calls you, you need somewhere where that's stored. Uh, if Bob isn't a prospect, they may not belong in the CRM either. So you might want to have, uh, or you might want to think about a marketing uh, prospect database of some kind. And really, that's what a, a marketing automation tool is, is uh, that central database of, uh, of prospects that aren't quite sales ready. Uh, and then you need to integrate with a whole pile of stuff out there. Uh, so you've got your your standard uh, advertising channels. You've got your analytics. Uh, if you can get your CRM in there, fantastic, because now you can get that uh, that really solid feedback from uh, from sales on what's closing. And then there's everything else. I've got Google Calendar in here because sometimes uh, setting up an appointment is the right conversion, and it's not uh, you know filling out a form. And there's all these other kind of things, right? Uh, I'm just going to pick like a couple out of here. Let's let's talk about call tracking. And then re the reason why I'm talking about call tracking is because so many cu customers out there still start business with a call. If you're in B2B and you're selling uh, uh, big bad things, you probably don't have pricing on your website. It might be a uh, call in for a quote or it might be calling for a, a quote based on volume kind of a thing, right? And if someone goes to your website, you need to be able to track that kind of stuff, right? So uh, really, what we need to do is set up tracked forwarded numbers for brochures, TV, in ad. You know, you've seen these. All the all the TV advertisements that are on TV right now, they don't use their standard 1-800 number. They've got a special 1-800 number that when you call, tells them, ah, we got a call from our TV ad. Fantastic. So that's piece number one that we need. Piece number two uh, that's becoming more and more important is dynamic phone numbers for your website. Uh, so on your website, when, when a visitor shows up, you need that phone number to change based on the visitor so that you can connect the website session with that phone call. And that's one thing that uh, more and more companies are starting to do. And uh, let me tell you, it's amazing <laughs> because it takes it takes you from that, uh, let's, let's say you're at 30%, it could take you from 30 to 50%, for example, just because it's such a, uh, still such a popular way for uh, for customers to come in. Uh, and then the third, the third point I, I wanna just uh, put out there, uh, if your calls are anonymous, or your call tracking is anonymous, you're gonna lose that qualitative measurement again. And I'll, I'll show you what a, a qualitative measurement is in just a second here. Uh, Call tracking looks like this. This is a, this is a real uh, user. Now I anonymized some of their information, but this is a real user that that uh, called us yesterday. Um, and there's a couple of really interesting things that we got out of this. One, okay, they they visited the website. Uh, two, we get the source. Ah, they came from oh pipe drive. Cool. Okay, they came from this uh, the CRM website. Um, and we get this really interesting qualitative information. We get to see how a specific customer. Uh, how marketing influenced them, how the website influenced them, and then how they uh, how they called us, right? Now, you wanna go a step further, what if we record the call and transcribe the call? Now, of course, if, if you're in a state with uh, one party consent, you need to make sure that you say the this call may be recorded for quality pr uh, assurance purposes, which is, is pretty standard these days. And here's what you get out of that. You get some really interesting stuff. You get your call duration. You get the phone number, the name. Okay, Bob, Bob Barker didn't really call us. I'm just, I'm just using that name as a stand-in. <laughs> um, and this helps qualify what kind of call it was. Again, like if you're just to measure all phone calls as a lead, sales management is going to look at that and say, mm, nah, I call BS. I don't think that's real. But if you can look at the phone calls and you can look at what kind of phone calls you got in, that's gonna be really different. And you can look at the keywords that they're using. Oh, that's very different. And you can listen to the calls. Oh, like as a marketer, this is this is a dream come true because I can listen to customers uh, based on the marketing that they saw. And I can see if my unique selling propositions struck home or not, because I can listen to see if they uh, talk about them to see if they're interested in them. Or I can listen to see if they have objections that those uh, USPs hit or not. So again, this is really good feedback that you can get back from uh, from call tracking and really cool information uh, for marketing and for advertising, right? Um, I could talk about uh, a Google ad that drove this user in and I could say, you know that, that Bob Barker guy? He actually came in through Google ad and here are the things that they said on uh, on the phone call and here's how long they spent on the phone and that kind of thing. And that's super powerful, right? That makes it real for a lot of people. 
Whereas telling someone I got 100 conversions last month doesn't seem real, right? Uh, the next one I wanted to talk about was email tracking. Um, because uh, this is, a, again, just another thing to think about uh, with email tracking. You might want to use uh, track links in your emails. I'm talking mostly about like those email newsletters that you're sending out to customers if you're sending out uh, email newsletters. Now, if you're sending out email newsletters, you want to make sure you're using track links. And really, if you're using like a platform worth any worth its salt, it's going to do this automatically. It's going to automatically use track links in your emails. And you'll probably get in Google Analytics the source of the uh, of the traffic, right? Oh, it's, it came from our spring campaign, for example. What you don't get without a really deep integration or without that uh, that platform that you're using natively using or natively sending the email is open and click on a per prospect basis. Let me tell you a story about why this is important. And, and I got it from yesterday. <laughs> we sent out an email uh, and five minutes later, we got a conversion from someone else at the same company. Now I can see that uh, the, the first person that we had emailed opened the email, but then I don't actually get a connection after that. All I see is this other person converting. Now, if I didn't have the same platform doing my conversions and showing the email open, I I could still do it, but it would be more difficult to see that connection and more difficult to see the influencer effect that my marketing couldn't actually uh, uh, view. Like I'm, I'm inferring, right? I'm, I'm guessing we emailed uh, uh, Bob and then five minutes later, uh, Katie uh, uh, called us up and asked us for a quote, right? Uh, and it happens a lot with us. So this is uh, this is another thing that's interesting to to kind of think about is how that's going to integrate with all of this as well. Whew, this is a reminder for me as as much as for you, <laughs> just to take a breath because we've been talking about a lot of tracking. Um, I just want to I want to come back and I want to revisit why and I want to uh, I'm going to talk about what great attribution sounds like because. When you have really good attribution and you know what digital ads are driving business, you say different things uh, to your team and you say different things to management. Uh, the first thing you might say, hey, Google Ads assisted or was a conversion pay point for $168,000 of our business last quarter. That's really different than uh, we sent out a Google campaign and it got this many impressions or this many clicks, right? That's very different. This is something that the other people in management uh, will respect and understand. An email follow-up after the sale gets us a new Google review 20% of the time. This doesn't speak directly to ROI, but it does speak to marketing's influence, right? Hey, if we have these sales and we send them an email right afterwards, we can get a Google review. And we know the Google reviews are really important for our business, right? Using Facebook ads, it costs us $305 per new customer. Now, again, depending on your business, that might be a fantastically low number or might be a horrifically high number, but I'm just giving an example here, right? Uh, knowing our cost per acquisition for customers is super important because it talks to scaling and predicting. If, if our boss comes up to us and says, hey, we can double your budget uh, next year, if we know a number like that, we can predict what the results will be. And that's something that most marketers out there just can't do. Bob from Acme was originally from an Instagram contest we ran last year. Again, tying in those marketing channels, tying it to a person's name is super interesting. And it's something that most of the people in the company will understand. And more of the people, uh, again, like if you want to uh, uh, kind of climb the corporate ladder and, and get into management and that kind of stuff, knowing this kind of stuff and being responsible for this kind of stuff is super critical. Because at the management level, they'll know about some of the big customers and they'll know about Bob from Acme. And if your fun little Instagram contest brought them in, man, that's really interesting. And you've got the key to uh, to doing something interesting. And finally, this this helps with uh, VP of marketing level stuff. If you have a, a, a marketing department that you're running uh, and you're able to show the results for the cost on your marketing department, oh, now you're not just a cost center. Now you're you're a revenue center and you're a predictable revenue center. This is a very different way of talking that, to be honest, some of the people on, on this webinar might already talk this way, but I bet most 
don't. Most talk about marketing as a cost. Most talk about marketing as a, yes, we put the money in. We don't really know what's working. This is like not only knowing what it's working, it puts a point on it. It makes it something that uh, is very easy to understand. And this is what you need uh, if you want marketing to get the respect it deserves in company and with your clients. You will have a seat at the table when you're able to make uh, statements like this because you're able to show your importance and the importance of what you're doing so easily. And the other thing, I haven't even mentioned this today, but um, the other thing that doing this really allows is some respect around your work and around your craft. You know, the, you know um, one of the problems we have in marketing is Hippo, the highest uh, paid person's opinion. Uh, the boss comes in and says like, I think the colors should be blue. And you know that you know blue's not such a great color. If you have numbers like this, they're less likely to mess with you and mess with your stuff and your domain because they know what a crucial part you play in the organization and in the results of the organization. So let me come back to how you can do this. And really there's, there's a couple of different options. Um, in terms of improving your attribution, if you're doing nothing today or if you're doing very little, the cheapest way and the fastest way to do this is start asking at point of sale. When you close the customer, ask them. Or when they come in as a lead, ask them, how'd you hear about us? And even that little step is gonna start giving you some insights. The other thing to look at is to start using Google Analytics. Again, it's a free platform. It, uh, it solves the quantitative thing uh, very well. And, uh, and it's pretty easy to use and get into. Google has really good training on it, and it's going to put you in the right mindset of analyzing and questioning everything. Now, the second option that you have is to use a lead tracking platform. Lots of lead tracking platforms are out there these days. They're all uh, pretty cheap and cheerful. Uh, the, typically, like a lead tracking platform will do forms and phone call tracking, and they'll make it very easy to do those two things. Uh, you'll put a tracking script on your website, you'll buy some phone numbers, and you'll be off to the races, and you'll be reporting on more than you reported on in the past. Now, if you're looking at doing that and a lot more, it's time to look at a, a typically like a marketing automation platform. Uh, marketing automation platforms uh, typically track more conversion points. Uh, they'll still offer some of those call tracking. And that the setup and cost can be about the same as, as a lead tracking uh, platform out there. So if, I, if I'm allowed to be like biased at any point in this presentation, I would say like market automation platforms will offer the most power in, uh, in offering attribution. And I could show you an example. I'll show you uh, Active Demand, uh, the software platform that, uh, uh, that I'm representing. Uh, you know, you can track advanced website usage. Yes, they'll do built-in and they'll support Google Analytics. Uh, you know, we'll do phone call tracking built in, super, super integrated. I, sh I showed you a couple screenshots along the way here. Email campaigns, built in, uh, website forms, built in, or just use whatever forms you're using right now. Online chat, CRM, email, calendar, office, and lots of other stuff, right? And sometimes, like for some companies out there, this is going to be really important, tracking all these different ways that uh, uh, that, that people come in. Some other uh, companies will get most of it with from just a few of these different conversion points. Uh, but since today is all about like showing uh, uh, results from digital advertising, I'm going to show lots of different stuff, right? And the other piece that uh, you can pull out once you have all this stuff, once you have like, like imagine all these different touch points being tracked in one place uh, where you have your customer, your prospect, uh, you can get a user journey out. So I'll, I'll, I'll show my example here. Uh, we had this agency in Atlanta um, and uh, I met with them uh, uh, a couple months ago, and I sent them an email about the platform. Um, and you know what? An interesting thing I saw, their VP of marketing opened that email about once a month. And again, I can get that because it's in one spot, and it's in all my prospect information is in, uh, in one spot. And then I saw that that VP clicked on an ad, a Google ad that we had on March 6th, right in the morning. That was interesting. March 6th, the afternoon, the marketing manager came to the website direct and signed up. Now, the question I have for you is using your current system, how would you have scored that? What marketing channel would have won, if any? Because I, I, I can tell you how uh, a lot of them would. A lot of them would see that and say, oh, we've got a direct conversion. 
and that would be the end of the story. But you can see here that it's not the end of the story. There was actually lots of stuff that happened that marketing was responsible for that led up to that. So if I could leave you with, with two things, one of them would be getting that tracking in there is, uh, is absolutely key because we're gonna be able to see what marketing is working. The other one, I love sharing stories like this. I like sharing these stories internal to the company because it helps other people see what we're up to in marketing. <laughs> and it helps, it helps them understand uh, how interconnected uh, this stuff is and how important this stuff is. So I'm gonna, uh, I'll, I'll leave you with that. But uh, if you'd like to, um, you can head over to activedemand.com. We've got uh, free trials over there. And then we've also got like a whole ton of resources on attribution and digital advertising, like a blog, podcast, and that kind of stuff.